A parachutist descends to the ground at a constant speed with the parachute open. Which force, together with the parachutist's weight, makes a pair according to Newton's third law of motion? Okay, so let's first go over what Newton's third law of motion is. So the definition is, if object A exerts a force on object B, object B exerts an equal and opposite force on object A. But then there are two other conditions as well for Newton's third law. One is that the two forces have to be the same type of force, and also they have to act on two separate bodies. So let's run through all of the different options and then see if each of these conditions are met. For option A, the drag force on the parachutist from the air. Okay, so the drag force, if this object, if this parachutist is moving at a constant speed, then the drag force should be equal to the weight. So whatever the weight is, that will be equal to the drag force. There must be no resultant force if an object is to move at constant speed. And that's Newton's first law. So the forces will be equal and opposite. So option A does satisfy this condition, but the two forces will not be the same type of force. One is a drag force, one is a weight force, which is a gravitational force. Those two things are not the same type of force. And then for that reason, it would not be option A. For option B, the tension in the strings of the parachute. So the drag force, its force carries through the strings to the parachutist, and those forces will be equal. So whatever the drag force is, that's the same thing as the overall tension force from the strings on the parachutist. And again, because the parachutist is moving at constant speed, that tension will equal to the downward weight force. So again, yes, they are equal and opposite, but they're not the same type of force once more. One is a tension force, this is a tension force, the other is a weight force. So they are equal and opposite, but they're not the same type of force, and also they don't act on two separate bodies. So both the tension and the weight, they act on the parachutist. So both of these conditions on the right-hand side are not satisfied. So it's not B. Let's have a look at C now. The gravitational force of the parachutist on the Earth. So for option C, let's draw a separate diagram for this. For option C we have, here is, let's say, the Earth, and then here is the parachutist. So obviously not to scale. The parachutist experiences a weight force. So the Earth exerts that downward force of W on the parachutist. And then from Newton's third law, the parachutist exerts an equal and opposite force on the Earth. So the parachutist pulls the Earth upwards with the same force of W. It's a gravitational force as well. The two forces act on two separate bodies, and therefore all of these conditions are satisfied. So we can describe the scenario in terms of this law here. We can say, if the Earth exerts a gravitational force on the parachutist, then the parachutist exerts an equal and opposite gravitational force on the Earth. And that's what we can see from this diagram. They are the same type of force. They're both gravitational forces. And they act on two separate bodies. One acts on the parachutist, one acts on the Earth. So the answer would be C. And then finally, for option D, the lift force on the parachute from the air. A lift force occurs when you have a plane that's cutting through the air. And as the plane cuts through the air, it pushes the air molecules down and the air molecules push up on the wings with an equal and opposite force. So although it's a similar kind of thing happening here where you have the parachute pushes down on the air and the air pushes back up on the parachute with an equal and opposite force, you wouldn't call that a lift force. That would just be called a drag force. So for that reason, it's not deep.